The investigators have now established ancient Artie's habitat. But what about Artie herself? If all her parts, skin, muscles, bones, and teeth were restored and reassembled, what would this strange African creature have looked like? To bring Artie back to life, the project now turns to one of the world's greatest natural history artists, Jay Maternus. It's a privilege and a challenge. The science team has now spent over a decade examining the Artipithecus skeleton piece by piece. Now it's time to put all the pieces together by harnessing science to art. This process goes back to the time of Leonardo da Vinci, who created lifelike human images based on his own detailed anatomical drawings. Now, using the same technique, one of today's most accomplished natural history artists takes on a creature da Vinci could have never imagined. For illustrator Jay Maternus, the challenge of creating the first lifelike scientific drawings of Artie has become a passion. Right now, of course, Artie is, has uh, consumed all of my attention uh, because it's so demanding. And as I say, it's uh, such a, an outstanding fossil, uh, the significance of which is, uh, is profound. To begin reassembling this intriguing creature on paper, they'll use the high-precision plaster casts of the Artipithecus skeleton. We take that piece and then align it with that one. He is the equivalent of a supercomputer into which years and years of primate structure have been poured and recorded and out of which comes an almost perfect image. Maternus begins his portraits of Artie by creating highly detailed drawings of each of the dozens of individual fossil casts. The fragments of her skull, her crushed pelvis, her grasping toe and hand bones. This staggering body of work amounts to hundreds of pieces of paleo art, each one precisely rendered at full scale. Literally hundreds of emails fly back and forth between artist and scientist, many with revised anatomical drawings attached. So it's a very odd looking creature and remarkably non-chimpanzee like. <laughs> yeah. Every bone and joint is carefully examined to ensure the accuracy of Artie's skeletal portraits. Trapezoid. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. That's what's the what's the next step, do you think? The next step would be to to put a skin on her. Okay. With all the all the trimmings, hair and and eyelashes and uh, Yeah. Maternus would work for over two years, adding muscle and skin to Artie's body. To envision what she might have looked like. Drawn in charcoal, this fusion of art and science resurrects this creature from the inside out, from her skeleton to her muscles, and finally to her outer features, her face and her eyes. With her long arms and grasping big toes, Artipithecus finally emerges from the shadows of deep time. Being a paleoanthropologist is all about being able to find the fossils, analyze them, prepare them, clean them, analyze them, study them, and share the knowledge that you get out of these fossils with the rest of the scientific community and the public, the general public. For years to come, scientists from around the world will sift through fossil evidence gathered during the decades of research by the Middle Awash team and other groups as well. But why are these discoveries important today? Virtually every culture on Earth has its own origins myth. And in fact, these origin myths are people's stories about how the world was formed and how they got on the world. But now we can move beyond myth. We can move beyond fairy tale. We can move, guided by evidence, to what really happened in our past. 
A century and a half ago, Darwin's critics pointed to the huge differences between living apes and humans as evidence of a fatal flaw in his theory that humans evolved. Cartoonists at the time satirized Darwin as a deluded, half-chimp, half-human creature. More than a century later, a real creature recovered from a small hill in Ethiopia has brought the hard evidence Darwin lacked. Artipithecus has finally removed the barrier once thought to separate us from the rest of the living world. And in this valley, we have found our roots. We've been able to trace those roots for six million years into the past and to put together a record of human evolution that is not only comprehensive, it's also very clear and is very compelling. We evolved. Evolution has produced a tree filled with branches, not a chain of links. Today, Homo sapiens is just one twig on life's vast and spreading tree. Even though Artipithecus lived far back along our branch of the family tree, it already had important traits found today only in our species. Artipithecus shows that we did not evolve from chimpanzees, and it also reveals that we were not created apart from the rest of life on Earth. We humans evolved as part of the natural world, just like all other animals.